Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Not Your Dad's Beer. Your host, Mark Bates, uh, at Rachel's house, my lovely girlfriend. We're about to have some beef stroganoff. Uh, we were supposed to film this lovely beer earlier today, but I forgot the camera. So with that being said, we're doing it tonight. Uh, a little Boardwalk Empire action, great dinner at the house, and I thought this would be a great beer to go with it. This is Crabtree's Syzygy. So originally Crabtree made a test batch of black IPA called the IFB. It stood for I'm Fucking Bored. Um, it was a fun little project. They debuted it at Euclid Hall, huge hit. When you think of a black IPA, it's a Cascadian dark ale. It's black like a stout, but super, super hoppy. Um, and a lot of those beers typically are 8% or higher. So with that being said, the original IFB batch tasted to me more like a Belgium style porter um, and way less hoppy and bitter than what I would hope for out of a black IPA. Even though the Brewers Association doesn't really um, have a style guideline for black IPAs, they kind of made it their own and, and made something that Colorado loved. They took a portion of that batch out and they barrel aged it. And that's what this is. This is the one time brew. They labeled it Syzygy. So what happened is uh, IFE was first made, then this was bottled as Syzygy for a one time release in 2011. And now they're coming out with the Black the Eclipse or the Black Eclipse, um, which will be the can version of IFB not barrel age. So this beer has definitely gone through a couple different names, a couple different changes, different batches and different styles to it. Uh, so, you know, I've been holding on to this since it came out. It's got to be pushing four months now just because the original batch I thought was more like a Belgian Porter than a black IPA. I really thought that the note, it needed a little bit of time to age, especially, you know, this is 8%. It's barrel aged. We're in winter. It's snowing outside as we speak. So with that being said, I thought it was a great beer to do today. So stay tuned. Cork slips right off real nice. Look at that. All right, so appearance wise, right away, looks like a black IPA. I mean, it looks just like a stout. Uh, the head's not as khaki colored as you would typically find. Uh, Stone's 50th anniversary, I think, was a darker color. But this has a very throppy looking head to it. Um, you know, it looks like it's going to have really, really awesome lacing. The bubbles are super tight. It's really good stickage just on the glass. So it's like fun in terms of like inside the beer. I see my reflection. It's a void of light. Nothing gets through. No clarity. It's not very opaque at all. That's a good sign. So let's go ahead and hop right in and see what it smells like. All right, let's give it a good swirl. Really agitate the beer. Bring out that head. Bring out that aroma. Right away, I'm definitely picking up oak. Oak mixed with the hops is almost leading to a sweet, fresh cup apple flavor, um, which is interesting. I like it though, it's refreshing. Uh, it smells like uh, Granny Smith green apples, just literally cut, and then you smell the area. Like you're getting a robust sense of fresh apple. There is a sense of dark chocolate there though, which might be playing towards the apple effect. That's probably the sweetness I'm picking up mixed with the oak. And then I'm also picking up the pininess of hops, which leads back to that, <clears throat> leads back to that really interesting apple flavor. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. That is a, it's a very interesting beer. So when you look at it in the glass, it looks, it has a big throffy head that just kind of sits there. It looks like it's going to be heavy, but it's actually pretty medium bodied or light, light bodied, if you will, for how dark it pours and how big it supposed to be, supposedly looks. Doesn't remind me of a black IPA, which is one of the reasons I've held on to it for so long. Maybe the hops have fallen off a bit, probably has, but you know, being a barrel aged black IPA, it's pretty thin in the body. Definitely, definitely malty. Not getting a lot of bitter. In fact, I'm getting much more of that porter-esque feel, which is a thinner feel of a stout. Um, the roasted malts are minor, though. You're picking up just a little bit of roasted malts, but nothing too, too intense. And there is a sense of uh, like a herbal grassiness kind of bitter that lingers on the back of the palate. Not picking up a lot of dark fruits. It actually is not very fruit forward at all. 
Um, it's very firm in flavor. There's a weird tanginess to it as well. Definitely not sour, but there's a tanginess that I'm getting from that from that barrel age, which makes it very interesting. Lively, lively, uh, kind of a carbonation feel in the mouth, even though the beer itself is not overly carbonated. Yeah, you're getting a, a roasted malt with a touch of chocolate for that finish. That is leaving, the, that's what it's doing. Uh, and because, you know, it is a barrel aged black IPA, the hops are sucking the moisture right out of my mouth. It's forcing me to kind of salivate and try to regain composure in my palate. It means it's really, really good for pairing up with food, which I think well, this will go extremely well with roasted meats. We're doing beef stroganoff tonight. I think it'll pair up really, really nicely with that. Uh, duck would go really well. Lamb would go really well. You want some gamey flavors. Um, you need something robust because this is definitely robust. Uh, but overall, um, I think it's a, it's a pretty good beer to pair up with food. Uh, drinking solely, uh, I think it lacks a little bit. But I think for food pairing, which is why we all drink beer to begin with, is to pair up with dinners and meals. It's really good. So medium bodied, Definitely malty, touch of roasted hops, a little bit of chocolate, and then like a, like a bitter hoppiness on the back, but nothing over overwhelming. Um, it's actually kind of thin. But overall, it's a pretty cool experience, especially by Craft Trace. It's one of the better beers I've had by them. Uh, if you can still find it in the store, check it out. If you've already been aging it for a little bit like I have, time to pop that bottle. It's winter. Get it done. Um, it's a cool beer. And I would expect to see this come out from Crabtree again later on in the years because, let's be honest, this is a really neat opportunity. And now that they're canning the Black IPA, this makes for a chance uh, for them to come up with something a little bit special that you're going to find in a 750 uh, milliliter format that's kind of a one off beer. And that's Crabtree. It's what they do. They do a lot of fun stuff like this. So check it out Syzygy Black IPA Barrel Aged. Thanks for joining us, guys. We will see you next time. Crabtree Syzygy, gotta tell you, Black IPA, this is not your dad's beer.